Today, we are taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowell. We are coming to you from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu at my home office in Makiki. Today, Dr. Christopher K.M. Hui from Hong Kong shall be touching upon your heart. He is a specialist in respiratory medicine and a co-founder of the Sea Star Children's Foundation. Today, he'll be sharing with us about having heart to help. Aloha and welcome, Dr. Christopher K.M. Hoy. Aloha, Wendy. Hi. Aloha. And, uh, good morning to your audience from Hong Kong. Yes, and I understand you're in the morning and we're in the afternoon. We're eight, 18 hours behind you, so you're ahead of us by a day and a half. So we'll get started. But before we do, Dr. Hoy, can you just share a little bit about yourself? Uh, yes, so um, I'm a specialist in uh, respiratory medicine. Um, I trained in the uh, UK. Uh, I worked uh, previously at the Royal Brompton Hospital and National Heart and Lung Institute for a number of years before I, I returned to Hong Kong. Um, my area of interest is in looking after people's lung uh, diseases, so things like asthma, uh, something called COPD, a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is related to smoking. Um, uh, this all comes under the umbrella of a group of conditions called airways disease. Um, we also look after people with lung cancer, and of course, in the last three years, uh, something called COVID as well that you may have heard of. Yeah, and so now that you brought that up, so so has the last couple of years with this COVID, has it uh, increased the need for your services and your profession because of what people went through and experienced with their respiratory system? Um, yeah, yes, Wendy. I, I think it's it's true to say that our, our health really is our is our biggest uh, uh, capital. Um, and, and so it's very important to look after our lung health uh, and, and our hearts as well, of course. And, and so really, I think there's been a greater awareness in these few years of uh, you know, doing uh, some checkups or making sure that everything's OK, um, even if it's after having had a, a recent infection. So, you know, just really quickly, a very layman style, could you just share with us what would be, how would we take care of our respiratory system? Well, I, I think we're all aware of the, uh, the, the potentially uh, harmful effects of uh, air pollution, for example. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've, we've known for a number of years now that uh, smoking and, and secondhand smoke uh, can cause uh, different types of tumors, uh, mm -hmm. including. Uh, certain lung cancers, and uh, our information, our knowledge, uh, the, the research about air pollution now um, is, much, is much more uh, detailed and has been, uh, the body of evidence has been growing in the last uh, uh, two, 10, 10 to 20 years. We, we now know that people who are unfortunately living in, in parts of the world where they are exposed to, to air pollution for, for long periods of time, um, they, they will Will, will suffer in terms of their, their uh, lung uh, function. So what we can do is, is uh, two groups of investigations. Uh, one group will broadly be based around imaging. We have things, uh, 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 methods of investigating, such as uh, uh, x-rays and CT scans now, so we can look into the lungs and see what the actual condition of your lungs uh, are, it is. Um, but we can also do lung function tests, so we can objectively measure what the lungs are actually doing as a, as a pair of bellows. Um, so functionally looking at the physiology of the lung. I see. So with somebody like me who I don't have any of those uh, side effects or issues, or um, would I be able to come to my doctor's office and ask them, hey, can you just check where my lungs are or how? great shape my lungs are, could I do that? Or do I have to wait until I have an actual issue pop up? I, I, my, I, my personal belief is I don't think you have to wait till you have symptoms uh, to go and talk to your doctor. I, I think it's very reasonable to have a chat and yes. to say, uh, you know, uh, at this stage in my life, um, I want to know roughly uh, how things are. So it's like, a, a, <laughs> a, we, we call it an MOT, so a, a, an annual check. Um, and we, we just uh, check in and say uh, hello and uh, to see whether or not anything further needs uh, anything further needs doing. Very good. That's good advice because a lot of times people wait until 
the doctor tells them what's going on. But I'm one that wants to work on prevention and preparedness. So that's why I was asking that. And I took it upon myself to ask you that because I have your audience. <laughs> so, uh, Doctor, um, I was wondering, you know, I have a photo here and there are a lot of people in lab coats and other fellow doctors, I believe. Are you responsible for all of these people? Um, it, yes, uh, in, indirectly, I was I was fortunate uh, to be working at the university uh, in, in Hong Kong for a number of years, almost 10 years, in fact. And uh, during this period, we were involved in building out uh, new hospitals and healthcare systems in uh, not just in Hong Kong, but in the southern part of uh, China. And, and this is a photo of my team, of one of the teams of uh, the Department of Medicine at the University of Hong Kong um, in uh, Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this is 150 doctors, and uh, they work very hard, uh, and we are working together to build uh, new uh, departments and new services for the local population, uh, including a lot of what we just discussed. So uh, imaging, lung function, um, the, the ability to raise the uh, level of awareness in, in healthcare, um, but also to provide a good healthcare solution. Wow. You know, when, I, when you told me what your specialty was in, uh, in the medical field, I was quite impressed. But then you caught my heart and my attention when we talked about something else. So when I met you, I learned about what you do besides that of an uh, uh, instructor at the hospital, at the university hospital. You shared with me that you are a director and co-founder of the Sea Star Foundation. So what does the Sea Star Foundation do? Um, yes, thank you, Wendy. So, so Sea Star is a children's foundation that we set up in Hong Kong uh, to raise capital to help underprivileged children in uh, China. Uh, across the country. And uh, the reason we, we did this, this was founded in 2012, uh, at a time when I had shortly uh, returned to Hong Kong and found that there was a need uh, for connecting underprivileged families uh, with healthcare services. Sometimes it's not just a matter of uh, resource, and not just a matter of, of, of funding for, for surgery. But, but also connecting and understanding what is actually necessary. So in interpreting those scans, in understanding the echocardiogram, um, in uh, having someone relatively uh, independently look in on these cases and then, and then see uh, what can be done to help them achieve um, the best results. And, and since then, I'm pleased to say we've been involved in over uh, 200 cases in the last uh, eight, nine years. Um, the, the organization has just celebrated its first uh, decade, in fact. Wow. And um, we feel very passionately that every child uh, should have the right to access uh, the top quality of, of health care, surgery, uh, corrective surgery, or congenital uh, heart defects. So things that they are born with um, should be a right rather than a privilege. Wow. And the reason why... Um... Chris, the reason why it struck home for me is because I was, I am one of those keiki in Hawaii, we call children keiki. I am one of those keiki that was underprivileged and that had a congenital heart disease. And um, yes, we couldn't afford to fly us out to San Francisco because at that time they didn't have the services of a pediatric cardiologist. So what you do for the children in China the American Heart Association did for me, and they flew in a pediatric cardiologist so that they could perform my procedure. And I'm ever so grateful. And so that's why when I heard what you do, I knew I just had to um, give you a shout out and the Sea Star Foundation for saving the lives as they have saved my life here in Hawaii. I'm very grateful to the American Heart Association. So continue doing what you're doing. I'm so grateful to have met you, a live living giver and a helper of, of these children to have quality of life, not just life, the quality of life. So is your main focus, uh, Dr. Hui, on congenital heart disease, CHD, with these children? Um, with, with these children, uh, yes. So we identify uh, cases that we uh, potentially can help through a network of volunteers uh, spread out throughout the country. Um, everyone in the organization volunteers their time. There are no salaries paid. Uh, the reason for this is because we want maximum benefit for our donors. 
Um, so at the moment, for example, of every 98, 98 and a half dollars coming in, every hundred dollars coming in, 98 and a half dollars goes out to pay for, for surgeries. Um, th this is a slide of, of the lungs, in fact, but, but it illustrates the 3D modeling and the level of detail with the imaging that I was talking about before. Uh, modern uh, CT scanners are now so good that we can pick up minutest uh, detail. Um, it's a little bit like our televisions at home. You know, we've right. gone from having very small black and white uh, TVs to now very, very big, very colorful and very high resolution uh, televisions in the last 20, 30 years. And, and with that, we have a very powerful tool. We can, we can pick things up before uh, they happen. Uh, we know that uh, surgery at the right time in a child's life can be life-changing, can be life-extending. And can give you, as as you as you know, um, a normal life expectancy. So we believe this is is what what you would call perhaps maximum bang for buck. We we think yes. it's it's hugely valuable. Yes. It changes the entire uh, life uh, outlook for for a child who's affected. Yes. Um, right. And unfortunately, these are conditions that the child and the family do not choose to have. Um, they are they are born with it. It's 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 very unfortunate. It's very distressing for young families, uh, for uh, young mothers and young fathers, um, and they are often at a in a position where they are unable uh, necessarily to have all the knowledge and resources to help them help themselves. And so we do rely, as you said, on organizations such as the American Heart Association and others, uh, including now uh, our own. Uh, to connect all the dots, to make things happen, and to make things happen in the right way. Wow. I've also read that you take care of a lot of children that have the cleft palate and the, and the cleft lips. Could you tell yes. us about that and what, is the, what are the numbers like? So, so uh, this was something that we found to be even more scalable. Um, it's, it's interesting to know the, the prevalence and the numbers. There was a study done in China in 2019 that looked at about 76, 77 million live births. And of those, there were in that, in the, in that period, over four years, I think it was, there were 201,000 cases of congenital heart disease. What we then found was the numbers for cleft palate, uh, so where children are born with an incomplete palate, and, and a, 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 what used to be called a hair lip um, uh, can be surgically corrected, but the numbers were even greater by very many multiples. And so, again, cosmetically, uh, these are injuries or, or, or birth defects, uh, abnormalities that, um, that can affect speech, learning at an early age. Uh, it affects uh, eating, even if you can imagine that sometimes it, uh, uh, an injury or an abnormality like this can uh, can affect the way that, that you, you swallow and, and eat. Um, it affects the, the dentition, the teeth, the formation of, of, of early teeth. And so we, we decided to provide surgery for these children as, as well. And, and in doing so, we found it uh, extremely scalable. Um, the, the surgical costs in China are low. Um, so the efficiency of uh, providing these, uh, these uh, solutions um, is in the range of maybe a few thousand uh, uh, RMB or, or Hong Kong dollars, which is in the range of maybe even just a few hundred US dollars. So, wow. so relative to the cost in other parts of the world, um, the, 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 the provision of solutions is, is not actually as expensive as you might think. Um, yeah. It's just being in the right place and being connected to the right people and the right surgeons and the right technical experts. Exactly, and not just medically, um, you're gonna. It's beneficial for these children, but even um, personality, um, and just being accepted by their peers because they look different. So you're giving them a whole new life, a whole new world by performing these procedures. And that that you know, I mean, every child wants to be like the other child and perfect in appearance. So you're bringing them closer to that. So that's. That's amazing, Dr. Ahoy. I'm just, every time I hear these stories, I'm like, wow, keep doing what you are doing. And I know if people out there can't join you in the field and they want to give and donate to um, C Star Foundation, I know that they can go to your website and, and help to sponsor these procedures. And the more funding that you all get, the more procedures we can do without having to hold back. So we'll just keep looking for those right donors to have that heart to help. 
Um, <laughs> so uh, on the next slide, I see an operating room. So walk us through what happens to these children. First of all, how do you find them? You find them, you process them, and then what happens after that? So we work with local partners, um, always at the community level. So we work with local clinics and local primary care doctors. So uh, the, the, the local um, uh, surgeries uh, in the community. And the local doctors will refer to our, our, our either through our website or our uh, connection uh, of our network of volunteers. Uh, when they contact us, we set up a case file. Um, there's a due diligence process. So we send somebody out to meet the family to understand uh, what's happened um, and then also to connect them to a local regional center. So in, in order to achieve the best uh, outcomes, uh, we aim to provide a sort of um, the, the sort of uh, the best uh, surgical outcomes in, in the world. Um, this is done really at the major cardiac surgery centers uh, across the country. Um, initially, going back many years ago, there was a thought, well, can we send some of these children abroad for surgery? Can we connect with other centers uh, in Hong Kong and, and across uh, you know, a different, our, our different network of friends? But, it, but in fact, what we found was that the, the, the solutions provided locally are, are really excellent. Um, the, the, the only thing was that internally things were not, all, you know, the dots were not always being connected up uh, in a very fluid way. Now, I'm, I'm happy to say this was, you know, over 10 years ago. And in the intervening, in the interval 10 years, um, mat you know, health care provision um, and the development of the country as a whole has, has moved forward in, in leaps and bounds. And so now um, we find that more and more these connections, these pathways, are more and more established. So we, we have to do less and less of this work. Um, and that's very heartening to see. So, so what we're effectively seeing is, is the, 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 the progress and the, the stepping forward of a system um, to, to absorb uh, the, the need and, and the, the surgery that these children need. Right. And exactly, you, you've um, resolved it in a very uh, humane way and uh, I think more even cost effective. By having a procedure done nearer to the child's home, the family can be around. And during the recovery process, I think the after part is very critical to have family around and the, as much normalcy as possible. So by having them do the procedure in the local, uh, lo in the locale, I think that's quite important. Same thing with me. Instead of having to ship the Hawaii children off to San Francisco, they could now do it here in Hawaii. So then I could recover faster because I'm in my own environment versus in a whole different world in the mainland or in some other part of the world. So it worked. You guys nailed it. And it didn't take you all that long to figure it out to have such success. I mean, so I'm ex ex actually I'm so excited to one day go and visit and see what what has been done thus far with these children. Do you follow up with these children as well? Um, yes, yes, we do. You're absolutely right. So over a period of uh, years, in fact, after surgery, we will drop in. Maybe sometimes it's a telephone consult. Um, we'll just uh, call up the family uh, with their with their permission, of course, yes. um, and uh, just say hello. Uh, how are you? Is everything OK? And mm -hmm. do you need anything else? Can we help you in any other way? And, and I think when you reach out to people in this way, uh, I think inherently in some cultures, People are shy to reach out for help. They are, they are afraid. Yeah, in their hearts, they are afraid, but they are also afraid to reach out. They are afraid to um, to ask for help. And right. so sometimes, uh, holding out that olive branch, as 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 the Bible teaches us, um, you know, is 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 something that we all have to do. You have to reach out and say, well, you know, are you okay? And can we help? And and if we have the knowledge to help, then I think. It's, it's what the French used to call a noblesse oblige, an obligation that we all have um, to look after one another. And, and I think in, in today's world, this is more and more necessary. This is something that we really all have to, have to refocus on. Yes. And that, to me, would be the success of this program, is not just finding them and taking care of them, but the after. Because now what? Right? And like you said, especially being Asian, they don't want to ask for help. They're, that's the last thing they're going to do is ask for help. But when you reach out, plus you're already proven, you've already done so much for their child, for that child, 
he and her or she will feel a little bit more confident to ask for help because you've already given it to them. There's no strings attached. And so that is the key. And what you're doing for them, as well as for myself, is now you've given me the component to give back. And so you've created one more good. And I know that that's where your story comes from. So I won't, I won't share, I won't share that part yet, but that is exactly, you've met the mission of your organization. So um, we have one more uh, slide or one more x-ray. What is this x-ray? And just tell us what this x-ray tells us. Um, so, so incidentally, I included this. Um, this, this shows uh, another side of my work uh, on my on, on a day to day basis. This is this is actually what COVID um, and a viral pneumonia looks like um, uh, on a CT scan. So, remember, I was talking about imaging and and how we can see inside the human body now. So, aside from looking at the structure of the heart of of the heart and and of the lungs, um, we can see the abnormalities. And here, you're looking at yourself. Uh, oneself in, in mirror image. So the left is the right and the right is on the left. Um, and you're looking at the two lungs in side by side. Uh, and you can see the patches of white are, are really where uh, the virus or the, the bacteria um, in a pneumonia, this is another infection, um, have, have spread out through the lungs. And, and so we can, we can see really where, where medicine has developed to a point where we can, we can, we can do a lot, we can see a lot but we can also do a lot to help. Wow. I mean, I know that must excite you a lot because it helps you in your field to be even more uh, detailed and to find things even quicker than in the past where you had to do probably um, more diagnostic and look for the issues. But now it's quite clear uh, right there that you can see what you need to see to take care of. So um, getting back to the sea star, I wanted to share with, everyone but i'm going to hold back and i want you to share with us why and how did you all come up with the name t star well i, I think the uh, the story came from, from the beach and i know you have a couple of beaches in hawaii yes uh, very very nice ones i might add mm-hmm. um but uh, a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking something up and throwing it gently back into the ocean um, approaching the boy, he asked, what are you doing? And the youth replied, I'm throwing sea stars back into the ocean. Surf is up, the tide is out, and if I don't throw them back, they'll die. And, and the child was worried that the sea stars would die on the, on the beach. Um, the man laughed and, and said to himself, well, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds and hundreds of sea stars, thousands of um, his point was that sometimes uh, it's hard to make a difference. Um, but after listening politely, the boy bent down and picked up another sea star and threw it back into the surf. And then smiling at the man, he said, well, I made a difference for that one. And so the concept is the same. We, we really feel that it doesn't matter whether it's one or 100 or 200 or more, if we can. Um, if we can raise the funds to help children in need, um, then then one at a time, I think we can make a difference to these uh, BC stars. Wow. You know, and I love hearing that story, and I can hear it every time I, again and again, and it still has the same impact, and I understand truly what that means, and that I am one of those sea stars, and I am making a difference by giving back more, and so that's what you're created, and in China um, and in the world, there are so many people, but if we just get one at a time, to change their hearts and their mind, then hallelujah, the world will be a better, better place. So you all just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I know that there must be numerous heart-touching stories that you've experienced, Dr. Koi. Can you just share with us maybe just one patient that stands out in your mind um, that you would like to share their story? I know like there's Tong Tong and there are many different stories, but could you just share with us one story? Well, oh, I, I, I think I think yours is an amazing story, uh, Wendy. Actually, um, you know, for for all those years ago to have had uh, sort of uh, seeing this this type of heart surgery um, in America um, is is a very heartwarming story. And 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 as 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 you've described, it it, it really changes a, a lifetime of uh, of work. Um, our 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 first case, uh, Tong Tong, you mentioned, uh, was a case who I came across 
uh, this was in 2011, and uh, she was born, unfortunately, with a very severe uh, cardiac defect with a congenital heart abnormality. And uh, we, we tried to raise the funds for her first surgery, and it was through that process of, of, of learning to help others, or to help her and her family first, that we, we laid the foundations for CSTAR, um, where we worked out the, the logistics, the connections, uh, the local surgical teams, um, and in fact, and, and, and by communicating with people, we really worked out a lot of the solutions that have served us as an organization over the subsequent years. So if there is a heartwarming story in all of this, I, I think we're all, you know, if we, if we keep an open mind, uh, we're all able to learn and we're all able to make connections in our lives uh, that can help others and can make a really meaningful difference um, to, to not just one case uh, like Hong Kong, but many others uh, subsequently as well. And, and I think that's very important is the, the momentum and the drive uh, to, to continue to do good work uh, where we know there's a, a good solution. And, and once we've, we've worked out the, uh, the, uh, the, where, where the, the answers are. Wow. Wow. Uh, amazing. And I'm so glad that you had, and you took the time, you made the time to share the, your heart and the heart of T-Star Foundation. As I said, I'm excited about it. I look forward to meeting more of you and going on a, a trip with you all to China to see the work being done. So unfortunately, Dr. Hui, we've run out of time for now, as I knew I would, as we talk and we could talk endlessly about all the stories. But I just want to say mahalo to you, Dr. Christopher K.M. Hui, specialist in respiratory medicine and one of the co-founders of the Sea Star Foundation. Keep on saving lives and having the heart to help. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll return in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo, Dr. Hoy. Hello. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.